No, it's going to be a lot of us that are triggered because we've been there and we know what it's like to be taken advantage of. And we're going to read this part together. If you're not ready for this, or if this is something that's going to hurt you, I'm going to say, shut it down. Thank you for the view. Shasta La Vista. But we about to get busy. <laughs> Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. I have not been promoting Uptop Beauty, but it does not mean it is not still there. And if you are not already a part of this book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's continue talking about Patti LaBelle's, what is this called? Don't Block the Blessings, Revelations of a Lifetime. When a woman walks into an office and say, says that I'm, you know, I have an act and I'm their manager, you know, they go either, oh, wow, what boobs. Mm-hmm. You know, or how quick can I do so and so? Or, you know, they don't want to know about you because they figure they can't. So it's it's really hard. It was hard for us to get across mm-hmm. because of that. And not saying that, you know, all of you uh, gentlemen <laughs> discriminated against us, but there was some discrimination. And I didn't particularly like it, you know, mm-hmm. because... We were trying to do something, and we, it, we there was talent, there was uh, time spent, you know, and it was like blood, sweat, and tears, mm. you know, and for people to be turned down and shut out because of their sex, I think is ridiculous. On this night, though, I got a very different reaction. This was to be no pleasant surprise. It was a terrifying shock, one of the most frightening experiences of my life. I was making my way down a dark corridor headed for the stage when it happened. Somebody reached out and grabbed me from behind, pinning my arms against my sides. Before I could scream, a large hand covered my mouth. That's when I realized there were two people. Out of the shadows came a familiar voice. I've been waiting for you for a long time. It was Jackie Wilson. He started kissing my neck and I could smell the liquor on his breath. As I struggled to free myself, Jackie's accomplice started dragging me backwards. Damn! I was kicking with all my might, but I was no match for him. Here I was, this little five foot three inch girl up against this 250 pound sweaty funky gorilla. Suddenly he stopped dragging me. I heard a door shut. It was the sound of doom. I was their prisoner. No one knew I was in trouble. It was Chubby's basement all over again. Only this was worse, much worse. Now there were two of them. Jackie went first. Pause. Now, if you've been around a long time, you know that I am very serious about young women putting themselves in situations to be taken advantage of. As a young woman, I have put myself in that situation way too many times, just wanting the attention of someone who I felt was attractive. And I necessarily did not um, want for it to go to the next level. I just wanted to be in their space, enjoying the attention. And there has been a time, I must admit, or two, where that shit went left. And I am fortunate 
enough to be one of those women that did not become victim to HIV because this person was specifically raping women to give them the HIV. And those of you from DC, y'all know exactly who that motherfucker, those of you from downtown DC, it's all uptown, but uptown can be separated into downtown. Those of you who are from downtown Northwest, you know exactly who I'm talking about. I was fortunate enough for that not for that nigga not to have the hebity jeebities then when he went after me. But it was all about me wanting the attention of someone who was that guy. It wasn't until later that we realized that this is what that guy did. He graped women regularly. In fact, it was my Judy's. You heard me talk about Candace before. But Candace had a girlfriend who went home and told her family about what happened. And at 15 years old, that little boy was going to jail for his first grape. But he had graped so many women before the age of like 14. Something was seriously wrong with him. It was a demon inside of him. Because you can't tell me at uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, he already has it in his mind that he's going to start graping girls. Taking it back to what I'm saying, you should never put yourself into a situation where you are one-on-one with a man where there is possibly a sexual attraction because he will grape you, okay? Or there's a strong chance that he will grape you. So you never, ever put yourself in that situation. Now, in Patti LaBelle's situation, Patti LaBelle, this was totally out of the blue. That's telling me that Jackie Wilson was looking at her as prey and he was the predator. First of all, that wasn't the first time they did it. Like and I've what I've told you told before, you when you meet mother hunches you that have done crazy shit before, it's because they've done it. Or murderers, when you meet crazy mother hunches that have done things lesters, that are crazy, it's because they tried uh, it. Wife they beaters. And you look at them and you be like, why would they, they do something successful. like that? It's because, because we've been tried there. it before. And we know and what it's like to be taken advantage. So fuck it, let's try it again. Jackie went first. He took his hand away from my mouth and started touching my breast. When he reached down to lift my skirt, I did the only thing I could. I started screaming. In the distance, I could hear the audience screaming out front. It was time for Patti LaBelle and the Bluebells to take the stage, but no one could hear me screaming for help. Please God, I prayed, let somebody hear me. Let somebody help me. I thought about Chubby fighting back. I didn't have a knife, but I did have my voice. I started screaming even louder at the top of my lungs, and I can scream every bit as loud as I can sing. It worked. Suddenly, they backed off. They let me go. I ran as fast as I could in the direction of the lights. I had to find help. I found Sarah and Nona, who had been looking for me. I told them what happened, but I swore them to secrecy. Who was going to believe that Jackie Wilson, the man who could have any woman he wanted for the asking, would have wanted me? Pause. Them be the worst motherfuckers. You hear me? That's why you got so many celebrities with grape charges. Because in their mind, you gonna like it. Because it's me. I'm not no random ninja. You don't want to get a pussy to a random ninja. But I'm Jackie Wilson. Every woman wants me. I'm doing you a favor. And let's think about the fact that how many women have this ninja done this to? It's probably a legacy of great women out there. That Jackie Wilson and his buddy then jumped on. Oh my God. Let me tell you something. I'm from the 80s. And there is a huge, or there was a huge grape culture in D.C., one, because it was teenagers and them young boys in their dumbass mind thought that, oh, she'll like it. Let me just stick the, t- the tip in. After a while, she'll like it. That's what them dummies think. 
And it wasn't until the Me Too movement that that shit started snapping. When a woman say no, bitch, that means no. Though, after the nightmare, I would see Jackie on the circuit from time to time. I never spoke to him again. Fuck him. Oh, he lucky. He lucky. She is from Philly. Okay? And Philly and D.C. and New York, if they don't do nothing else, they, 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 they reproduce murkers. That's what they do. And it could have been so easy for a little Patsy Holt to call her cousin, Leroy, that murks for a living. That's what he do. He a hit man. And say, hey, look, Jackie Wilson did add, add, add to me. Oh, really? I, I'm, I've been kind of slow this month. So, okay, where, where y'all at up there? Okay. All right. I'll be up there. And then Jackie Wilson's ass be found dead in the sewer somewhere. So he lucky. He ain't get the right one yet. But you know it was many others after that. Tongues. Yeah, we think his ass died from a heart attack on stage. Somebody probably poisoned his ass. Bastard. Four years before I learned the power of forgiveness. I hated that man. I couldn't bring myself even to look at him. I never could understand why a man who was so loved would try to force himself on a young admirer because he did it before and he succeeded. Bastard. Jackie Wilson suffered a heart attack on stage while singing one of his early hits, Lonely Teardrops. He spent the last eight years of his life in the hospital in and out of a coma. Mm-hmm. That's what the Lord do to you when you take so much pussy in your life. In January of 1984, Jackie Wilson died. Three years later, in an extravaganza at New York's Waldorf Astoria, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Some of the biggest names in the business celebrated his extraordinary talent. Everyone recalled the remarkable things he could do in the spotlight in front of an audience. But no one ever knew what he did in the dark corner in the back of the Brevoort Theater. Lies, Patty. The lies you tell. You just don't know. He got you and it's a long line of bitches that he did that to. They've done that before. And trust me, whoever it was that said, hey, let's give Jackie Wilson a, a, a inductee, blah, blah, blah. Them bitches didn't great. That, those ninjas didn't great bitches too. It's a club of grapers that have had a long legacy of graping. It wasn't until the Me Too movement that them niggas stopped. Matter of fact, after the Me Too movement, them ninjas were still going hard. And then now that they locking up the Weinstein, the Cosby, the Diddy, the Russell Simmons, you know that nigga them, uh, Move to the, the Bermuda Triangle so they won't catch him. But it just started slowing down. Bastard. By 1965, the British invasion had turned the music industry on its head. Four white boys, John, Paul, George, and Ringo, led the revolution that totally changed the American music scene. Their success was so awesome, it left a lot of black artists and their record labels scrambling to survive. That whole period was just so wild to me. Yeah, because ninjas was worried. I have never understood it. I don't to this day. Just think about it for a minute. The most popular English groups of the time, the Yardbirds, the Animals, the Rolling Stones, were white boys who loved playing black music. The Beatles covered hits by black artists. Remember their big hit, Twist and Shout? The Isley Brothers hit with it first. In the fall of 1965, we got our ticket to ride with the Bad Boys of Rock, the Rolling Stones, and what a ride it was. We thought we were living in the lap of luxury when a few months earlier, Mr. Montague got us our own minivan. Then we found out what luxury really felt like. The Stones had their own plane, a sleek 40-seat twin-engine Martin, and they invited the artist on the tour, a male quintet called The Vibrations, and Sarah Nona, Cindy, and me to fly with them. 
I took my first plane ride, courtesy of Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, Charlie Watts, Bill Wyman, and the late Brian Jones. As happy as I was to be out of Mr. Montague's wheels, I can't say I love flying. It's just never been my thing. I do it because I have to, but even though every time I get on a plane, I still get nervous. I'm not as bad as Aretha Franklin. Girlfriend hasn't set foot on a plane in Lord knows how many years, but I always make somebody, my husband, my son, my best friend, fly with me to cool me out if the ride gets bumpy. I think I'm the only person in the world who likes turbulence. I love that shit. First of all, your sinuses is all messed up up there, so it's like the best thing you can do is just go to sleep while you're up there. And then the plane shaking, it's like rocking you to sleep. Now, the only time I have a problem with turbulence is when it do that, that sudden fall. Like, you can feel the plane, like, boop. Drop down like immediately. That shit hurt. That shit hurt my stomach. You making me a little queasy. But that turbulence that's doing like this, oh girl, you get the best sleep of your life. Some people be like, nay, you be feeling like you about to die. Maybe. On the Stones tour, I had Sarah, Nona, and Cindy to give me courage. With them, I always felt safe. With them, I could psych myself into doing almost anything, including flying nonstop for six straight weeks. Nerves aside, although there was one thing about flying that I just couldn't handle, that dull, tasteless airplane food. Two shows into the tour, I found the perfect solution. More than 30 years later, I'm still using it. Hot sauce. I guess the bad boys of rock did have some kind of influence on us. I'm not sure, but I think it was on this tour that Cindy and I had our first and last fist fight. Taking a ride on the east side, made a left on MLK. What a beautiful day, what a beautiful day. Riding high on the west side, looking for a hood where to play. Won't you come out and play? Won't you come out and play? Hey, taking a ride. Hey, hey, on the south side, ooh, ooh, hey, 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 hey.